Well, I mean, Tim Miller, this is where it's it's too late, right? The goose is cooked. This is who is running the RNC uh, platform policy process, Russ Vote. He is also one of the key authors of Project 2025. They are one and the same. They are indiscernible. And I understand that his base will believe whatever lies he feeds them. But Trump is, you know, unfortunately now playing for voters beyond his base. Talk about the liability that is Project 2025 and David's reporting on the sort of crackpots yeah. that frequent Mar-a-Lago. Well, clearly Trump knows it's liability. That's why he's trying to walk away from it. I think that's pretty significant reporting right there from Vaughn. I mean, it's something that we all know, but having it be out of the horse's mouth that he says that, that these guys are going to do this blueprint, um, I, I think provides more ammo uh, to the Democrats and to the forces that are trying to stop Donald Trump uh, because these aren't these aren't popular policies. And I think the other reality is we know that these two things are linked, right? Because a lot of these officials that are uh, around the Heritage Foundation and other groups are the types of people that are going to Mar-a-Lago. Uh, they're the types of people that would staff a Donald Trump administration. We know that Donald Trump is not uh, uh, you know, a stickler for details. That he's going to be the, not going to be the one worried about who you know is the deputy uh, undersecretary that is enfor that is enforcing these rules at HHS and you know at, at Department of Homeland Security and all these scary you know policies that the Heritage Foundation and others are laying out. Um, I, I do want to add just one other layer to this. And I, I think that um, he gave a speech last night at his other club at Doral. And just, you know, the, the, a lot of names that people are familiar with, like, the, you know, Vaughn mentioned Bannon and Flynn. But he shouted out from the stage another name, Laura Loomer, somebody that he has had his photo taken with also recently. She was recognized from the stage last night. This is a person that said on her podcast that she wants a white ethno state. She has been unapologetic in saying that she is a lot is Islamophobic. Um, she has advanced conspiracies about how mass shootings are false flags aimed at taking our guns. Um, it is important to understand who the people are going to be around Trump, who are going, who's going to be at Mar-a-Lago, who's going to be in his ear, um, and who's going to be staffing his administration. And, and so, you know, because Trump is Trump, right, and he's a lot of word salad, I, I think it is incumbent on everybody to listen to the words of, the, of these people that are going to be around him, both at Project 2025 and at you know, these kind of hangers on like Laura Loomer, et cetera, that are around him um, at his various Florida clubs. I mean, Tim, I need to just say a little bit more because I think hangers on, right, right, is an understatement. I mean, she is yeah, so toxic to the kinds of voters that Trump is doing things that make it clear that the people around him think that next week is about a grab for the independent voters, some of whom moved away from him between Charlottesville, the insurrection and the conviction, right? So he shaved off some of the toxic edges so that he can stand there and say things like, I won't take away a woman's right to choose. Yes, he will. His code is leave it to the state. So platform also removes a ban on marriage equality. They eliminate language that's been in the Republican platform saying marriage is between a man and a woman. Laura Loomer is like 10 train stops beyond right wing extremism. Say more. Yeah. Laura Loomer tried to run for Congress and was rejected by Republican primary voters who usually like to choose the craziest SOB in the race. So that shows you how extreme these people are. Uh, you know, I mean, this is uh, to be acknowledged from the stage for Trump. You know, it's not just like she was at an event or in a photo line, right? Trump is on stage last night in Doral and he's complimenting her and he's shouting her out. Like this is somebody that is an unapologetic white nationalist, somebody that is an unapologetic conspiracy theorist and, and um, Islamophobe, right? So I, that's just one example. I just want to talk about her, right? Because people know, you know, you, you know Flynn, you know Bannon, who, who knows who will actually be around. The, what we know is these are the type of people that are going to staff this next administration. These are the type of people, to David's reporting, who are going to be around him. That's really what I meant by hangers on. Who are going to be around him at Mar-a-Lago and have uh, uh, their voice in his ear. It's not going to be responsible public servants. It's not going to be experts on subject matter. You know, it is going to be far-right extremists that have gone much further than even Trump has gone in his rhetoric. And they're going to be the ones implementing the policy and influencing him. And I think that's I, the critical thing to understand about a Trump 2.0. You know, Vaughn, the, the, the disorienting element of the Trump story is that he is successful at sort of moving the frame, right, moving the Overton window. So where Matt Schlapp and CPAC was so galling to people who watched it and Matt Gates, he's now surrounded by something totally different, not people who are ex-government officials, ex-policymakers, ex, -government officials, ex, -policy makers, ex 
political, whatever, and, and, and they were all viewed as extreme and politically toxic in the moment. But this, this new group and the characters that are at Mar-a-Lago and in David's story are, are just an entirely different crowd. And I think that that's why there's an entirely different conversation. Also, who would join the administration, not only at the secretary level, but also at the agency head level in 2025. And I think, though, if I may, I think this is, to a certain extent, 2024 is the year that Trump has allowed to be Donald Trump. I know we've been talking about that for nine years, but ever since November of 2022, his senior advisor, Susie Wiles, has been running his 2024 campaign. And there has been very little uh, uh, palace uh, chaos. There has been no turnover of major staff. And in large part, I am told by those within and outside of the campaign, the reason for that is, is because Susie Wiles has not tried to close the door to anybody in terms of their access to Donald Trump, much in the way that the door to Mar-a-Lago is open, right? Even to the likes of Nick Fuentes, who finds his way inside of Mar-a-Lago. And so Susie Wiles, senior advisor to Trump, is not acting as a gatekeeper per se. Donald Trump right now is his own gatekeeper. And so therefore him, it is provided an opportunity to dismantle his Republican opponents through the GOP primary process earlier this year. And now he's ahead in polling nationally against Joe Biden. And so for Donald Trump, he feels like this is a moment where he has been wholly allowed to be himself, surround himself with those who perhaps can be considered extreme or far right. Yet it has not appeared to politically harm him, at least in his mind, four months out from this November election. David, it strikes me that we're almost 18 minutes into this conversation and the idea of um, sort of profiting, profiteering over the, the political. Obviously, he's out of government, but there's no indication that he wouldn't sort of ring the U.S. government for everything it's worth if he were to prevail. Just talk about something that was central to your beat during the years of the Trump presidency. Well, we know that even while he was president, he would do things like go to his clubs very often. The Secret Service has to follow him to protect him. And then he would charge his own protectors and, and keep the money. He charged the Secret Service rates up to $650 a night for hotel rooms. That was the first time around when he was, in theory, trying to sort of stay on the right side of ethical lines so he could run for reelection. This Trump, if reelected, would not have to worry about that. And so I think a lot of the, the, the safeguards, the things that they said they were going to do and sometimes actually did while he was president, you know, not making new deals with foreign governments, uh, not making new overseas deals at all, trying to supposedly give back some of the profits of their foreign business dealings and dealings with the U.S. government. It doesn't seem like they would do any of that. In fact, he hasn't promised any of that, and it doesn't seem like the, his voters are expecting him to do it. So, yes, the next time around, not faced with any need to run for re-election, I don't think we'd see Trump even as restrained as he was. It would be a little bit different because the Trump Hotel in D.C. is gone. That was the main place, it was the most convenient place for people who wanted to sort of butter him up to also pay him. But people could still find a way, and it doesn't seem like he would make any effort to turn that away now. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.